Welcome back. We've talked about a lot of different things in the previous sessions. In this session, I'll try to put it all together so that you have a clear understanding of exactly what it is that you need to do to succeed on the Cognitive Weight Control Program. I hope by now you're comfortable with the key concepts of this program, but let's just review them. Your autopilot doesn't work when it comes to eating. Therefore, you need to exert cognitive control over what you eat. Essentially, you need to think about what to eat and make conscious decisions and an eating plan rather than just turning your body loose to do what it wants. When faced with an eating situation, you create walls in your mind that cause you to make bad decisions. The decisions you make are often the exact opposite of what you need to achieve your body management goals. Again, you need to take cognitive control over the situation. The way to overcome a dysfunctional autopilot and the bad decisions you make in an eating situation is to make as few decisions as possible and to make them at a time and place that is separate from where and when you will actually eat the food. Your autopilot won't do a good job of telling you what to eat and how much to eat. You need objective criteria to plan your eating. The main objective criterion is calories. You need a daily calorie allowance. You can determine a starting point by using a tool such as the Mayo Clinic calculator to estimate your daily calorie usage and then subtracting approximately 500 calories from that number. You need to adjust your daily calorie allowance based upon experience. Decide what eating periods or meals you will have each day and how many calories you'll allocate to each meal. Allow more calories for those times when you have the most trouble. You may have multiple plans for different situations, such as going out to a restaurant. Obtain the tools you need to implement this plan. These include measuring cups and spoons, an electronic food scale that measures in grams or ounces, a cell phone or computer with a food diary app on it, and an electronic scale to weigh yourself. Create standard meals to make this program easy to live with. You can have as many standard meals as you want, but each should be aligned with your calorie allowance for the meal in which you'll eat it. Enter them into your food diary as meals so you can reference them by name rather than by having to enter each ingredient every time you eat one. Also, put them in a notebook or on index cards that are easy to access at meal preparation time. Your standard meals can include both at-home and restaurant meals. Most of the time, you should just eat standard meals. Just decide which one you want, put together the ingredients in the proper amounts, and enter the name of the standard meal into your food diary. This, more than any other single thing, is the key to your long-term success. Otherwise, the administrative burden is just too great. It's critical to have the foods you need to eat on hand or readily accessible. Nothing torpedoes a plan faster than discovering that you don't have one or more of the ingredients for the standard meal you plan to eat. Weigh yourself every day and keep a log and graph of your progress. At the end of each week, Evaluate your progress over the past two weeks and make changes to your calorie allowance or your exercise routine or both if you haven't lost at least a pound in two weeks or have lost more than five pounds in a month. Exercise at least five days a week. Your exercise program needs to be in tune with your physical health and capabilities and your opportunities but strive to get to the point where you can do 40 minutes of aerobic exercise most days, if your doctor concurs. Create a list of reasons you want to lose weight. Also, create a list of power ideas that are meaningful enough to you that they can help change a bad eating situation into a good one. Put both lists on the refrigerator or wherever you are when you're most tempted. Above all, Remember, this is not a diet. It's a lifetime eating plan. The only thing that changes when you achieve your goal is the number of calories you allow yourself each day. This is a lifetime commitment because your autopilot doesn't work and it probably never will. 
It took you a long time to gain that weight, and unfortunately, it's going to take a long time to lose it. But there are many rewards along the way. Notice them and celebrate them. Change is hard, and this definitely involves change. But look around and notice some of the really hard things people have to live with. This really isn't that bad. It honestly doesn't matter whether someone else has an easier or harder time managing their weight than you do. This is the body you live in, and it is the only one you will ever live in. Whatever success or lack of success you realize is going to happen in this body with all of its idiosyncrasies. Well, that's it. That's pretty much what I know about losing weight. I really hope these ideas will help you as much as they helped me. There's an amazing life out there for you, and nothing would make me happier than knowing that this plan helped you achieve it. You can do this. I really believe that. I did it. It took me 77 years, and I'm not quite there yet. But I don't have anything going for me that you don't. You just need a good plan and patience. Here is one final limerick. I hope you've enjoyed them. Every one of them represents something that actually happened to me or to someone I know. Being fat isn't fun. There's a lot of pain involved, but the light at the end of the tunnel is very bright. After months of cold weather, summer was finally in reach. Jill needed a new swimsuit to go to the beach. The tiny bikini they sold in the store had almost no material where she wanted more. And as for her bottom, it was bare as a peach. Be well, live a long and fulfilling life, and let me know if this channel helps you. Good luck.